Our guest on This is America in the World is Dr. Hassana Alidu. She's ambassador of the Republic of Niger to the United States. She also represents Niger to Colombia, Venezuela, Canada, Malaysia, and South Korea, and served as a regional director for UNESCO in West Africa. Madam Ambassador, welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. We have to, at the beginning, get our pronunciations correct, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> uh, is it Niger or Niger or, help me? Niger. N Niger. Yeah. Ah, Niger. Mm -hmm. Is there confusion with Niger and Nigeria? Yes, we are always confused, <laughs> but then our neighbors and brothers and sisters is all right. In Nigeria, there is a Niger state. So it's always confusing again. Okay. So, but we call ourselves uh, people from Niger. Niger. So it's kind of uh, soft and a hard at the same time. <laughs> Niger. Yes. I uh, came down in a taxi cab today, and the cab driver was from Niger. Yes. And he knew his father knew the president. Okay. Who was fairly new, right? Yes, he has. Few years. Yeah, he was elected in two thousand eleven. 2011. Yes. And he just gave a speech up in Harvard. Yes. Yes, that's what he yes. was telling me about. Yes. Now, how is the, the history of the country is so fascinating because even from 1960, mm -hmm. independence, mm -hmm. five constitutions, three military rules, mm -hmm. now a democracy. Yes. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you contend with all of that? Well, uh, it's a, a process. Uh, yeah. Democracy is a, a process. We went from uh, independence. We had a uh, yes, uh, an election, and the president was elected. We had a couple of uh, military regime in between, mm -hmm. but uh, since the uh, early 1990s, we are experiencing democracy. Uh -huh. Yes, you are right. It has been interrupted um, uh, here and there by uh, coup d'etats, but uh, today we can say since 2011. We have a democratically elected president, and we are about uh, to prepare um, the a second uh, a, an election in 2016, early 2016. Ah. So I just came from uh, my office where we had a delegation from Niger coming to set up the coordination team for the election. So which means that uh, this process is taking root and we are hopeful that it will be consistent. When you looked at the uh, election in Nigeria, mm -hmm. which was uh, a, a very important mm -hmm. and a smooth transition of power, uh, democracy seems to be taking hold in, uh, in, in the countries, huh? Yes. Um, actually, before coming to the United States, I was representing UNESCO in Nigeria, Abuja. I just uh, took a office as ambassador in February. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us uh, uh, in, in Niger, we are very, very pleased uh, to see that f free, fair, and credible election uh, uh, took place in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a signal because Nigeria is one of the biggest countries uh, in Africa. And to see Nigeria taking some leadership in organizing free, fair, and credible election it's very important for Africa. So we want to congratulate them mm. for, for that. When we say Niger, yes. what picture comes into your mind? A beautiful country. Beautiful. Um, Two-thirds of the country is the Sahara Desert. Ah. And beautiful people. We have diversity. We have uh, um, seven to eight ethnic groups. Mm. Uh, we have Hausa, we have Zarma, Sorai, we have Fulani. We have Tuareg, we have Arabs, we have Tubus, we have Buduma, and we have Gurmanchima. And so this constitutes uh, in uh, the heart of uh, Africa. It's a landlocked country uh, in the heart of the Sahara Desert. Two-thirds of the country is the Sahara Desert. The south has some vegetation. But uh, these are very, very resilient people. Uh -huh. uh, we, we have a harsh environment, mm -hmm. yet um, people are very proud people, hardworking people, and that's the, the country that uh, I have in my dreams, in my imagination. Uh, let us take a little break. Let me tell the folks at home, uh, we're talking uh, today with the ambassador, new ambassador in February, she was posted here, 
uh, new ambassador from uh, Niger uh, to the United States. Uh, she is uh, Ambassador Hassana Alidu. And uh, we are just learning about this wonderful country, uh, new to us. Uh, sit tight on the other side back. This is America and the World. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. Tourism, Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Panama Tourism Authority. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services. Madam Ambassador, uh, when you said landlocked uh, country, uh, tell us uh, the countries that border uh, on Niger, and also if being a landlocked country is always a negative thing. Can it be a positive thing as well? Okay. Yes, uh, we are a landlocked country, meaning that we don't have access to the sea. Mm. We are surrounded by, on the north, by Algeria, by Libya, on and uh, east side by Chad, Nigeria, and the west side by Mali, and uh, on the uh, south uh, west by Burkina Faso and Benin. Mm -hmm. So you can see that we are really surrounded by countries. Um, for me, um, being a landlocked country means that we have also communalities uh, with all these countries uh, in terms of a sharing population. We have ethnic groups uh, from uh, Niger, which are part of uh, the other uh, neighboring country. Uh, it means also that uh, in a, a time of peace, uh, whatever, for example, Niger cannot produce, the other neighboring country ah. can produce. So we have cross-border trade. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, Niger belongs to the ECOWAS, um, West African Economic Community. And part of it, you have all the West African countries that share uh, similar cultures, uh, languages, and also we have trade uh, together. Mm. In the North, for example, we, we share uh, with uh, Libya and Algeria not only population, but uh, also um, we, there is trade uh, uh, from more than 100 years uh, ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, when there is peace, and we always continue to have these exchanges. So uh, the fact that one is a landlock uh, is not necessarily uh, the problem, um, but it's when it's landlock and we don't have peace surrounding the countries, then you are really in a predicament. Mm. And this is the situation where we are right now. Mm. Uh, so uh, when you look at the north, we have uh, Libya, which is our neighbor in the north. We've all, uh, since uh, the demise of uh, uh, Gaddafi, uh, Libya is uh, in a situation uh, that uh, uh, does not foster peace. Then you have Nigeria, our neighbor, and we have Boko Haram. Yes. And on the west side, you have uh, Mali, again, mm -hmm. uh, after the collapse of uh, uh, the regime in Libya, we have also rebellion, Tuareg rebellion, but also you have Acme coming into Lib uh, Mali. So Niger is really surrounded by uh, insecurity. Mm -hmm. and, and so that um, has affected uh, the country's own security. How has uh, Boko Haram uh, impacted and uh, even infected uh, Niger? Well, um, uh, it has severely impacted Niger. Um, prior to uh, uh, the attacks, first 
when Boko Haram was more active in Nigeria, you have displacement of the population of Nigeria into Niger. When you look at due to uh, the activities of Boko Haram, we have more than 100,000 um, people uh -huh. from Nigeria running uh, into Niger. Uh -huh. But we have also our own uh, attacks by Boko Haram in, in, <laughs> in Niger. In, in Niger. Mm. Just two days ago, Boko Haram attacked also Chad. So when you oh. look at around the Lake Chad, uh, uh, the lake is uh, an area that uh, belongs to Nigeria, Niger, Chad, and Cameroon. All this region is uh, impacted by the activities of Boko Haram. Mm. Uh, so the insecurity um, uh, in um, the, these neighboring countries have a severe impact on Niger, which is welcoming. Uh, so we have a humanitarian crisis. Uh, having more than 100,000 people in a country mm -hmm. which is already uh, suffering uh, from uh, drought, uh, from uh, um, a lack of rain, uh, it's very important that uh, the international community becomes aware of the effect. Uh, and you have a very small army. Very small. Uh, and when an army uh, tries to challenge Boko Haram, as uh, Cameroon did, then that provokes attacks there as well, huh? Yeah, exactly. I would like to say that we are very proud of our army mm -hmm. um, because of uh, really um, the proactive uh, measures that uh, President Mohamed Isifu took, um, mobilizing the army, uh, and also the support that we got from uh, our uh, allies, like the United States and France, the army was reinforced to ensure uh, border security. Uh, so you can tell that more than three th th about 3,000 uh, troops are based in uh, Boko Haram area with uh, uh, troops from Chad, Cameroon, and Nigeria fighting Boko Haram. Uh -huh. And this has a huge impact because we, we have to ensure uh, security at the Libyan border, and we have to ensure security at the Malian border. Yeah. And this is the longest uh, borders that we have. So we are very proud of uh, uh, the action and proactive uh, leadership that the President uh, Mahmoud Isifu uh, took uh, to, to, to really prevent and the spillover from uh, really impacting too much on Niger. But we are proud also of uh, the army, uh, which is willing uh, to, to mm -hmm. really guard mm -hmm. the country. Uh, so the partnership that we have with the United States, training the army, helping us with, uh, uh -huh. um, with information and, 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 and security is very important, and as well as the French government. Something is in, in my mind just came in my mind. Do we have a drone base? Yes. In, in your country? Yes. We do? Yes. The so U.S.? Yes. So that helps in collecting information uh, so that uh, at least uh, a prevention of attack. Mm. Uh, let me learn, uh, since, since this conversation, uh, I want to learn about the country and have our folks learn about the country. Population, how, how, how many people? We are 17 million. 17 million? Yeah. And yes. mostly a rural population. We are huh? 17 million. Uh, more than 80% uh, of that population is rural. And also the median age is 15.6, which is very young population. And uh, half of the population <laughs> is 15 years old or younger, huh? Yes. Whoa. Yes. So this is, this is a very big challenge. And also we have high fertility rate. Yes, um, seven, seven. Point six. So per mother. Per mother. And so uh, these are uh, demographic challenges. Mm -hmm. And so it, uh, what uh, the government is currently doing is to proactively promote uh, 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 policies which allow us to deal with uh, uh, demographic uh, uh, ex explosion. Mm -hmm. And by mainly uh, mobilizing also men. Usually when you have the, uh, uh, this type of uh, population issues, we think also one has to focus on women. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Niger, we are focusing on both men and women. The president ha has a, a, a program that he called and uh, male uh, schools. And this is teaching male uh, about um, Planned Parenthood, uh, how to really uh, look at uh, the family size, 
how to plan um, because one can understand due to cultural uh, uh, practices um, most of the families are bigger uh, units but uh, uh, how in uh, this modern time to convince uh, um, head of households which are, uh, who are men that uh, having fewer but healthy children mm -hmm. is very important for the family. Mm. This is critical. But also we are putting, the government is putting a lot in educating women because uh, studies around the world uh, show that uh, when women um, go to school and they have some education, they tend to have fewer and more healthy uh, children. And so these are um, um, uh, strategies that uh, Niger and government uh, are promoting, mm -hmm. ensuring that uh, girls and women have access to education and training, but also uh, ensuring that men understand the effects of a, a demographic explosion, not only on the family unit and the community, but in the whole nation mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, combating poverty and also uh, the ability to redistribute uh, wealth when it is generated. I know that we mentioned agriculture and, uh, and the rural population, mm -hmm. but also some of the economy uh, is tied up in mining, uh, yes. ur ur uranium yes. and uh, gold even, mm -hmm. huh? uh, and then uh, aid from other countries plays exactly. a role. Huh? Could yes. you talk a little bit about that? Yes, one of the, I would say the economy is predominantly agrarian, agriculture based. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eighty percent of the GDP really is generated. Eighty percent. Mm, I will say uh, about. Okay. Uh, and then you have mining. You have we are among the first producers of uh, uranium, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now gold and other uh, mi minerals. Oil as well. We, we yes, oil and 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 now uh, gas. Mm -hmm. You see, so these these are. Um, one can look at Niger as this dry country, but actually uh, the soil of Niger is rich in terms of petroleum, in terms of uranium, in oh. terms of gas, in terms of uh, in terms of coal. Uh, so uh, the whole um, approach that the government is uh, uh, using today is uh, to try to say uh, how to um, benefit. Uh, from all these uh, resources by looking at uh, private um, uh, a public par uh, private partnership and using uh, the revenues uh, uh, part of the revenues coming from uh, the uh, extractive industry to impact development so that's uh, positive and mm -hmm. very good news yes. at the same time a very poor country huh exactly we rely a lot uh, on aids mm -hmm. and so uh, uh, that uh, is is a challenge. Uh, so uh, right now, what the government is saying, we want to invest in infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, looking at, for example, the creation of a, a dam in the uh, capital city area, uh, uh, a, a bit farther than the capital city. The capital, on the in, capital on city is what? Nyami. Nyami. On the river around uh -huh. the Tilaberi zone. It's not too far from the capital city. Uh, if we have the dam, it will allow us, uh, one of the challenges that we have is energy. Uh, we rely on the energy coming from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But if we have the dam, we can have energy produced and we can cover not only Niger, but we can sell energy in the neighboring country. Mm -hmm. But the dam will also allow us uh, to have uh, irrigation. Because since we are agriculture based economy, how to modernize um, and, and be uh, not so reliant on rainfall for agriculture. And so this is um, another aspect. But the, uh, the dam will also allow us um, to generate jobs for women and men who are ah, living yes. around so that uh, their, their economy and the household income uh, can improve. We were in Benin last summer mm -hmm. and uh, uh, did uh, a program that focused on the backbone project okay. that they wanted to do seaport and airport and rail line up and Paraku, a dry port up through into Niger. Yes. Is that going to happen? Is that moving forward? It's a reality. 
I was in Niger in December. Uh -huh. uh, this is a project that uh, a Nigerian was uh, were looking for over 70 years. We always talk about the railroad yes. coming to Niamey and going all the way uh -huh. uh, to uh, the beach of Cotonou. Yes. And President Mahmoud Isifu, he ensured that uh, during his mandate, uh, the railroad uh, project uh, takes shape. And today we have a railroad in Yami. It was inaugurated 18 December. So it will go all the way from Niger down, down through Paraku and then and out then to Cotonou Koto and out to the sea. Exactly. So now you have access to the sea. Exactly. Is that through the Backbone Project? Is yes. that from Mr. Duso? Yes, it is a, it is a project um, uh, promoted by the economic uh, community of West Africa. Ah, the really, whole gang. Yes, linking all the West African countries. Perfect. Because uh, uh, today, if you don't have uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. like the railroad, yes, just moving commodities. Yeah, by truck by is truck. a horror. Exactly. Because the roads are not good. Yes. And also it's cost effective. And this railroad facilitate the integration of people and, the, and communities. In the surrounding areas. In the surrounding area. Um, as we come up to the end of our time, and we're just getting started, uh, your role as ambassador, what, is your, what, what do you see as your mission and what do you see as your goal? Uh, first of all, I, I feel honored uh, to be appointed by um, my country, my president, to be ambassador in the United States, a place where I did all my graduate students. I am a Thomas Jefferson Fellow. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm from both yes, places. Yes, you, you know as well. Yes, I, I, I feel like I am also at home. Uh, I think uh, uh, the role of uh, the ambassador and the way I see myself is uh, to promote the linkage, uh, people to people, uh, this bonding between the people of Niger and the people of the United States. And to represent Niger in in in, in United States um, in a way that allow um, that diplomacy flourish between the two countries, I think uh, you can see today Niger one is one of the uh, uh, strong allies of United States in the Sahel region, trying to promote peace in Mali, trying to promote peace in Libya, and trying to uh, uh, to combat radicalization and extremism whether it comes from Boko Haram or it comes from um, ACME or any uh, uh, negative forces in, in the region. But I think also uh, my role is to promote also um, a pa private uh, partnership. Uh, I think uh, there is a, a development through um, public uh, government to government, but I think the private sector, today what Niger needs is investment. Mm. Uh, I would like uh, during my tenure uh, to see that uh, the private sector, the American private sector, sees Niger as uh, a destination for investment in tourism, for investment in solar energy and renewable energy, for investment in agriculture sector, for investment in the health sector. So these are, and I think we will take the opportunity that AGOA also allow us to have uh, to, to promote uh, trade commerce between the country. I am an academician. I am a professor in the United States. I think uh, um, uh, th there is also a room to strengthen university to university partnership and the civil society engagement. Uh, when you look at the role that Peace Corps played mm. uh, since uh, uh, the early 60s, or Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa was born, actually, out of an idea in Niger through the discussion that uh, President Juri Hamani, our first president, had with the founders of Africa. So we have a long history of partnership and uh, really solidarity. And I believe that uh, during my, my, my tenure, uh, I have to, to work hard uh, so that uh, uh, both Americans and Nigeria see uh, that this is a platform for uh, re uh, revitalizing this uh, uh, partnership and collaboration and diplomacy. Madam Ambassador, we're at the end of our time, but we're very pleased that you're going to join us on a roundtable uh, discussion 
uh, well, we'll take a look at poverty throughout the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Ambassador. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for Thank the you. education. Thank you for having me. For information about This is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. Tourism, Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Panama Tourism Authority. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings and Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services.